Good morning, um, Darren Doherty here. Um, I'm out at a place called Epilock in here in central Victoria. This is a place uh, that we've had, or that we had for a few years. I think we bought this in about 2006 and then we sold it earlier this year um, to Ga Gary and Janice, who we've just been chatting with. Um, I came out, I had a bit of wood left over and um, I thought, well, we'll have a bit of a look at the water systems that we um, installed. We, inst we did the last lot of work here um, in terms of um, a, a bit of trimming and uh, whatnot a couple of years ago and we've been waiting for the rain. Um, the rain hasn't been really that helpful for us for the last few years so um, dams have been just filling um, verse, uh, later in the year or in the summer when you might get a summer storm. So to give you a picture, as you go back this way, there'll be a bit of few cars coming along like now, um, there's about a 50 hectare catchment, so about 120 acre catchment up through here. And you can see there's a primary valley here, and then there's a primary ridge over here, and then another primary ridge, which is a much higher primary ridge just up here. So you go all the way up that road there, um, all the water on this bitumen road all comes down basically to this um, flood point here. And if you go back up here, so that's quite a long um, stretch there. The stretch up here to the apex of this primary ridge is actually quite short. It's only a couple of hundred metres, whereas that's about four or five hundred metres up to there. So it was one of the reasons why we bought this place um, was because of the geography of it and how this was set up to be a catchment. Um, these are all overgrazed uh, paddocks through here, so they're quite firm and... Um, in the summer, if you get a summer storm, uh, it can be quite a flash. Anyway, what we did in June of uh, May, June of 2010, was I designed this road system. So the road um, basically goes through, and it's a loop. So this is a prop. This is a square property that's on a corner. So there's a road up here and a road here. So this road goes through, and it falls at one in three hundred this way and then it falls at one in 300 coming back the other way to this little primary ridge which we've got running through here, or it's, I wouldn't even call it a primary ridge, it's a, it's a, it's a ridge of a ridge almost in key line. So the water from here comes down into what was, or what is the exist, was the original dam on that place. It's probably built in the 1930s or 40s or maybe even 50s. So here, as you can see from all the debris, all the water comes down off this road, comes off this point up here, comes around the corner, comes down this road, and then runs along this gutter. Now, and then it continues along with, and you can see this is a cambered road here, so some of the water goes off that way and some of the water goes off that way. So half the road water goes into this gutter, and anything that comes off the land goes into that gutter. All the wor water off here also goes down into this dam, and this dam we've connected to the next dam by this channel. So pretty well everything in this zone is collected either in here or the next dam. Now, in 2012, in February, stop just here, in 2012, in February, we got, um, so I designed all of this for a peak flow event of 50 millimetres in one hour, which to, for all of the data that I could find, that was the record at that time. In February of 2012, I think it was, we got um, 50 millimetres in 30 minutes. So it was you know, double the volume of rainfall, so it was a double the, the peak flow volume. The pipes that I put in at the end of this road to go under it and then into that dam were too small for that event. And so what happened was the water banked back up all the way to here in this gutter and there and went over the road. And I, could, I wasn't here at the time, so we could only see the evidence of it through the, the cutting that the water made at these two points that it just decided itself. So what I did to remedy that was if you can see here, it's hard to see because it's quite slight. Um, I dropped this road level 
from about here through to here um, pretty well straight away. I got the, my uh, Graham Jennings to come out and he did that. And we made that level, so there's basically no camber here. And this is a spillway. And it got tested a few weeks later because a few weeks later we got 75 millimeters in half an hour, which was a new peak flow volume. And it worked beautifully. So instead of the water not being able to, like the pipes being too small, what happened was the water that banked back up here because the, the pipes were too small now had an exit. So that worked really, really well. Um, and uh, yeah, so a subtle uh, amendment, which if you weren't paying attention, you wouldn't even see it, which is ideal from my perspective. So this dam was added, oh, I've never seen this dam lower um, over this summer, it was as low as it's ever been, and it's always been renowned in this area at least as being the most reliable dam in the district. So it showed us how bad it was. Now, then we got a pretty good start to the year in February, and we got um, some pretty nice rains over March, and that filled this because of the effectiveness of the catchment, and because, well, I mean, I say the effectiveness, if when you've got a long drought, the landscape gets very firm. And so if you get intense rainfall in that period, well then you'll get a lot of runoff. So this filled up very quickly. Um, and so what we'd done here a couple of years later, uh, later was, I was finally able to get these two dams joined. So this is the overflow. And as you can see, it's nice and broad. This is a beautiful situation where the water goes back up into these um, trees and whatnot so you've got a wetland so any water that comes down out of the catchment um, for this dam has to go through this wetland and then when it overflows it goes through this nice wide system which I expect over time will fill with rushes and all the wetland vegetation and then it's got this and you can see here you can see where the residues of where it's flowed, it's flowed really, really flat and really gentle and quite wide. You can see by the debris that the water has flowed really wide, which is exactly how we want it. And that the, so that's working really well, I'm pleased with that. So it comes along here and, uh, sorry for the walk, but, um, <laughs> <clears throat> so this is the first test for this and you can see it's bare um, that which is not ideal we'd love for all of this to be grassed up but we just didn't have the rain so I expect that um, uh, I expect that you know if we came back here at this time next year this will have a lot of grass and weeds and and rushes and all of that sort of thing in it because uh, it will have um, well, we'll, we'll have had a season of reliable humidity, which it just hasn't had. So that comes along here. Now, I've just gone past the spot which I should look at. So just here, you can see where the bank is bare here, and the bank's bare there, and here it's not. So from this point, just here, through to the dam, which is just over here, this is level. There's no flow. So from, whereas from the dam to that point just there is a one in 300 fall. So from here through to here it's level. And you can see from the debris again that this has worked. I'd love to have seen it when it was working. So this is what we call a level sill spillway. So when this dam overflows, it back floods. So water's coming this way water comes back this way and when it meets and it gets up high enough then it, this bank is too high this bank is too low uh, too high but this has been cut so the water then goes out through here and you can see through the vegetation and through the debris that it's made its way through it may be that um, Gary and Janice might need to uh, cut this down a little bit and modify it and stuff just when they're you know to pay attention to it because we've just done it with the levels and things change, debris, mat, debris stacks up and different things happen, which then change the uh, elevations that you're dealing with. So, 
Yeah, there might be a bit of tinkering and maintenance to be done, but it looks like it's worked really, really well. So that runs along here. So if you've got that water running here, it will run, even though this is level, because it's got that, because the water source has come from that way, it'll push that water through. And then, if the water source is now that and want it to go back, it will go back um, the other way. So you'll have water go two ways, which is really cool. So this is the dam that we built in May, June of 2010. Now it's four metres deep. Um, and it's a really square, like it's one, it's a 45 degree angle on each side. So it's quite steep, one to one batter. And what happens, um, we've got about a, a 30 by 30 flat base. So it's about three megalitres of water in here at full right now, which is great. It's also got a 100 mil lock pipe. So a 100 mil pipe at the base of it. So you can treat the, this dam like a tank. So this is on, a, it's what's called a ridge dam. So the embankment is shaped like a, like a U. So now this is, um, a little beach that we made and this is a um, this was a Costa Georgiades's idea actually was to make a a terrace wall there's another one in there which we, is submerged now which is two 200 millimeter by t by 50 millimeter or eight by two inch uh, red gum eucalyptus camelgulensis terraces and on this top terrace we put this um, flat on here so that you could sit your body, the idea was that you could sit in there you know, on a summer's day with your body submerged and put your uh, put your elbow on here. I'm not going to do that now because it's, well tomorrow's the start of winter I think so. <laughs> anyway, so this is the other, this is the other road which comes in and there's a pipe that comes through here. So that sneaks around, comes through here and then this water runs in through here. So you can see, if you come to here, you can see uh, how I re designed that retaining wall so that 50% up the height of it is the full water level. So that's all worked really nicely. All the rushes, etc., have established themselves to their natural height. You can see there's another just down here. You can see there's another lot of rushes a bit lower and that's really you know because all dams don't stay full unless they've got a constant source of a spring underground spring or something like that this doesn't so that's that's actually the uh, natural you might say normal level that the water um, set, sets at which is where that extra other line of um, this is a, a juncus um, sits and that's really great because it protects the, the the, um, the embankment of weight for wave action and um, yeah it's all working really well. So yeah so you can see from this point that this road here has a gutter coming in it's more of an in slope road whereas this one is a bit of a different one it's in slope but it's also got an outs more it's both it's sort of got a it's a hybrid of a um, in slope out slope road whereas this one's pretty well all in slope and all of the water that collects on here will then run, go through this one, all of the water that comes from this one will run to this one. So it's bringing all the water to this point and does so extremely successfully. So on average, we get about 500, 550 millimeters of rainfall a year. So about 26, 28 inches of, of rain. And even when we've had our driest years, which have been in the 200 or eight inch to sort of 10 inch or 250 millimeters, this dam has filled um, because of the power of this catchment. It might have just filled, um, depends on the style of the rainfall. Like if we got a heavy storm over summer, which was, you know, a quarter of a 50 mil rainfall or something like that, which might've been a quarter of the whole, um, that would be enough because of the, um, because of the features that we have.